Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. We are in chapter 2 that is standards of e and &E, and we are into the 2.2 ISO 26262. As a part of this tutorial we are getting into the next segment of this chapter that is 2.2.2 integration of the tester in the safety life cycle. So from the previous uh, tutorial, we understood what exactly safety fundamentals are and from the point of like what exactly the safety standards and safety culture are. In this particular segment, we will be understanding more about how tester contributes to the safety life cycle. The safety life cycle generally describes the phases of a safety-oriented product development. It starts with the first product idea and the search for possible risk. After the specification of the resulting safety requirements, the implementation into a specific product follows. The cycle ends with the disposal of the product at the end of its life. This safety life cycle, according to ISO 26262, goes through the following phases. So what are the phases of the safety life cycle? It generally comprises of three different phases. First phase, product concept, which is generally about the planning, if you relate to your conventional methods. Second phase is product development, when generally the product gets developed and implemented. And third phase is product production and maintenance, that is after the release for production, which is like post-release activities and maintenance phases, which generally takes place if you relate to our product life cycle of automotive industries compared to the conventional methods. The tester at supplier works mostly in the first two phases. So this is generally the tester contribution will be from the point of planning and from the point of development where generally the contribution of the tester is very keen and very vital because uh, at initial phases we do follow the principle and make sure that the tester is contributing effectively in order to find as many defects as possible, getting a clarity on the requirement and making sure that the person has a very good understanding of what exactly is being created. The changes to the product within the third phase lead to a return to the first or the second phase depending on the their extent. Now generally if you have any kind of changes involved during the third phase which is quite in the production or probably in the maintenance would return the process into the previous one. So it's more of a like of iterative phase where if we have any kind of defects which are found during the production or the third phase then obviously we can recycle or move to the second phase in order to complete those changes and then come back to the third phase again. Therefore the tester also participates in the modification if required. That is, at any point of time, if there are any kind of changes which are taking place, the tester can contribute from the point of validation and from the expectations of the user. Based on the safety-related requirements, a design the test cases, a tester designs the test cases and select the test technique for the verification within the product development and the validation of these requirements. So of course, the static and dynamic approaches are quite common here as well. That means initially when the work products are being prepared, the tester will be contributing from the point of verifying them or conducting reviews on them. And once they are finalized and making use of them in the production, they definitely validate all those requirements. The activities of test planning normally takes place within the concept phase. So of course, because the concept here is generally called as the planning. So that happens during the planning phase. Uh, adjustments in the resulting documents, for example, in the test plan or in the test specifications, can, however, be necessary in any phase. So, of course, we do understand from our foundation level syllabus that a plan is de defined much earlier in the life cycle and probably as you proceed with your proceedings like creating the test cases, implementing the test cases, or preparing the test suites and executing them, you might experience that the plan is uh, no longer beneficial or probably you need a deviation or some kind of tweaking to the plan to fine tune it, then obviously at any stage, you don't really have to go back to the test planning to do the same. You can actually do it on the move. The test execution mostly takes place at the transfer between the individual subfaces of the product development. For example, between the implementation and the software integration, as well as 
further on to the hardware software integration. So which generally means the executions happen at many places, it's just not a one-time activity. When you generally begin with the first phases like unit or integration and system, which are the conventional way of uh, doing the dynamic analysis and testing. The same way here, uh, when you talk about the subphases of these like product planning and development, so you have unit testing there and following that when we have uh, moving from the implementation phase to the production. So there are a lot of you know testing being performed. So that does not end there. You may have uh, other activities following that could be like in the real time when we have the final software hardware integration happening of the embedded systems. There also the tester contributes by executing those test cases. So well, just wanted to tell you more about what exactly is the contribution of Tesla and how they exactly integrate with the safety lifecycle and contribute at the best. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. We'll be getting back to you with more tutorials on the same chapter. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.